I mean, uh, especially the people that have been here 25 to 30 years and their fathers worked here. I mean, you know, this has provided some, some great family ties and it is a very emotional kind of a decision that's been made. GM says it'll try to place as many Norwood workers as possible at other company operations and it'll accelerate transition and retraining efforts for employees now underway. Among the people most frustrated by today's announcement, probably local union leaders. They've spent the past four months trying to convince GM Detroit to give them another chance. John Matarese live in Norwood now with their story. John? Pat, as soon as GM announced last fall that it would eventually be closing down the Norwood plant, Union leaders here got together a special committee to do everything possible to save the plant. Well, they did everything possible, but obviously it wasn't enough. 4,000 GM auto workers today suddenly saw their jobs, their livelihoods, being yanked away from them. But while the shutdown announcement left almost everyone at the plant angry and frustrated, this man, Union Committee Chairman Cleon Montgomery, may have felt the frustration more than anyone. I don't know if I want to say I'm bitter. Uh... Uh, you have to say you are some, yes, because, I, I, you know, like I told everybody, the Norwood people deserve better than what they've been given. Montgomery, along with several other union members, spent weeks putting together this book, a compilation of facts and figures that prove in his mind that GM Norwood can produce a car for less money than other GM plants. But he says GM wasn't interested in seeing it. Yes, that bothers me because that proves what I've been saying all along, that they're closing the Norwood plant because of politics, not because of... Uh, the uh, work relationship, the money, or whatever. And Montgomery is now finally admitting he sees defeat on the horizon. No, I'm still not giving up. Now, but I'm not going to stand here and try to make people believe that it's not going to happen. It's here. You know, it's reality. This plant is closing. Now, last Friday, you may recall that Channel 9 followed Cleon Montgomery and other union leaders up to Detroit, where they made another plea for GM to keep the plant over. Well, today Montgomery says he is bitter about the results of that trip. He says, obviously, GM knew at the time last Friday that they would be making this announcement today about the August shutdown. He says, well, then why did they even invite us up for that meeting if they knew this was going to be the result? Reporting live from Norwood, I'm John Mattery. Pat? John, let me get this straight. There was not even a hint at that meeting that this announcement was coming this week? It sounds incredible, Pat, but you're absolutely right. They did not tell them at the meeting when the plant would be shutting down. And uh, Montgomery and the other union leaders are saying they just can't believe that the company kept it from them last Friday when they were up in Detroit. That is a little difficult to swallow. I don't uh, blame them for yeah. being, uh, being uh, uh, somewhat disturbed. John, thank you. Meanwhile, as if all this weren't enough, workers at Norwood's second largest employer... The last employees will clock out for the last time. John Matteris is here to tell us uh, how the pending close-up is being handled in Norwood right now. John? Randy, the calm mood outside the GM plant these past two days appears to have given way to one of anger and frustration. Many workers yelling, others walking out wearing black armbands to show solidarity. Today, of course, is the last day for some 2,000 auto workers at the Norwood plant, which shuts down for good tonight at 8 o'clock. In the past two days, 1,200 other workers punched out for the last time, and the total number of jobless when all is said and done will number more than 4,000. This morning's lunch hour was not the typical sit-down break it usually is. Most workers spend it saying goodbye and thinking of what's ahead. It's kind of sad. Kind of sad. But when you've worked here 23 years, then you got to leave, you know. And you don't know what's going to come ahead. Pretty rough. Pretty tough seeing it closed down? Yeah, I, for about 30 years, mm -hmm. pretty rough. So I didn't, uh, I mean, I don't really mind it. Pretty sad feeling today, huh? Yeah, for a lot of people. A lot of people ain't got no uh, other sidelines they can do. And a lot of them have, so it ain't going to really hurt too much. The end of the line, as we've reported, will come just eight hours from now with the final car going to a plant employee who won it in a special raffle. Randy? John, what will most auto workers do? Do they have jobs? Uh, most do not at this point. Uh, they say they're going to take it, uh, take some time off, uh, a few days, a few weeks, then start thinking about it. A few do, but there have been no transfers yet to other GM plants, and most of them say they really don't know what they're going to do. Yeah, we hear a lot about, what, 95 or uh, 85% of their pay? Yes, they will be receiving some of them up to 95% of the pay for a year, but that's yeah. not of another. As they filed out of the Norwood plant for the final time, many shook the hands of their fellow workers, others giving a goodbye hug. Everybody's in there just um, getting their 
good checks and saying you know, final goodbyes and everything. Brenda Bailey, like many other family members, came out to the plant to meet her husband, but she found it a difficult moment. It's hard saying goodbye to everybody because we have a lot of friends here. It's, it's real sad. Cause From here, many workers told us they'll be heading to the unemployment office, only a few with new jobs at this point. Yet even with 20 and 30 year careers coming to an end, both union and management say it's remarkable how most everyone get their spirits up on the job today. Everyone is really staying on that high road and um, it's, it's really been evident. Uh, I think it's a, a day the workforce should be real proud of. Many, however, admit they will be feeling down once the assembly line goes dark and today's last day at school excitement wears off. It's kind of sad. Kind of sad. But when you work here 23 years, then you got to leave. In just a few more hours, the last Camaro will come rolling out of the building, and then the assembly line. This giant 60-year-old plant will finally come to a halt. A couple of hundred workers will stay around for the next two and a half months, cleaning up and removing machinery. But for everyone else, this is the day they hoped would never come. The end of the line for General Motors is gone. Many wept, others circled the plant in automobiles, leaning on their horns. While hundreds said their final farewells, workmen inside began turning GM's Norwood operation into a ghost plant. Good evening. It's been a long time coming, and now it's done. The assembly line at GM's sprawling Camaro and Firebird plant in Norwood has been shut down. There was sorrow, anger, bravado, a stew of emotion, someone said, a death in the family. We begin our coverage with Deb Arnold. They filled the streets, they filled the sidewalks. Family, friends, neighbors, workers who'd already punched their time cards for the last time. They lined the dying GM plant to make sure that 64 years and 13 days of history did not go out with a whimper. The workers filed out one by one, each after they'd finished their particular task for the last time, each with pink slips in their pockets and memories in their minds. You've been around some people for 20, 21 years, and when I never see them anymore, they can't hurt. These workers knew this day was coming. They knew since November 6th of last year. Some ignored that announcement. Some vowed GM would change its mind. But tonight, there were no more denials, only goodbyes. Carly Ritchie searched for comfort after saying goodbye to the friend she's worked with for a decade. Some of the finest people I've ever known are right there. We're right there on that plan. they do anything for you. Not. Above the scene, some with but a few hours of work to go watch silently. In the middle of it, others mourn the death of an era. Still, many of the workers who pass through these gates for the last time tonight will tell you they're down, not out. I survived some kind of way. It might take a little while, but I will. The last car ever to be made in Norwood rolled off the line at 8.30 tonight, a 1987 Camaro IROC. The $22,000 car will not be sold, though. It was raffled off among GM workers and we'll go to Wendell Spurlock, a man who spent the last 19 years of his life at GM Norwood. So, yeah. Deb, right now, are all of the employees out of the plant? No, Carol, there are about 800 workers still left. Some will be tearing down the equipment and shipping it off. Others will be cleaning up the plant. Be there for a few more weeks. Just a few more weeks. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks a lot, Deb. Pat? Next up, and the last, as the GM train rolls out of the Tri-State, Fairfield. General Motors is a stamping plant in Fairfield. It makes body parts. And like Norwood, that operation's being mothballed too, but not until December of 1988. GM Fairfield employs 1,400, not nearly as many as in Norwood, but still a lot. Most of them are being offered uh, transfers to other GM operations, or at least are being given the first track at positions that become vacant down the line. That, of course, is not the case in Norwood. The Norwood workers are going to continue receiving most of their salaries for a long time, most of them. But apart from that, the company that most of them have worked for for so long, that provided them with a living and friends and a sense of belonging, that company's gone. And as medical reporter Bill Price tells us, its presence may spell trouble and even turmoil for some. GM Norwood's last day is only the beginning of a long emotional roller coaster ride for many of these veteran GM workers and their families. Psychologists say they're firing and the plant's closing like losing a parent. The security of knowing that GM was always going to be there is gone. We'll probably go through a significant mourning 
mourning period. Wenker fears the grief could be acted out by some of the fire workers in self-destructive behavior. More drinking for some, while others may even try taking their own lives because they feel worthless without their GM jobs. Watch for signs of despair, signs of hopelessness. Depression is like a snowball. It's cumulative and it will um, become out of control very, very quickly. Wecker suggests taking a vacation away might help some of the workers regroup after the shutdown. But the closest travel agency to GM Norwood reports few takers so far. We haven't seen that this year. And uh, I think a lot of it has to do with people don't know what they're going to do. If that's the case, GM workers need to start looking for new work opportunities now, where either their old skills can be used or new ones developed. In the meantime, workers' families will have to help out with support. In Teresa Bauer's case, that means working more while her husband, Bill, now stays home. Didn't have to be a plant closing. You know, if he was sick or on sick leave or maybe he got hurt and had to quit working, I would have to pick up the slack no matter what. Accepting that kind of help from the family can make all the difference in the world during this stressful period for GM workers. But what psychologists say makes the difference between a survivor and a non-survivor is mental attitude. If you look at your firing as a new beginning, a new opportunity to take a chance and try something different, you can probably turn this loss into a real gain. And naturally, Pat, that's advice that all of us can use almost at any time. That's true, Bill. Uh, it sounds to me as though not only should the families be staying together, so should the workers themselves. Exactly. In fact, the psychologists say one of the most...